It's time for me to teach you a really super important lesson on how to use your focus squares on your camera. The focus squares are important because it tells the camera where to look. And if you don't know how to tell your camera to change its focus squares, you're gonna have a hard time getting creative and getting the focus shots that you want. In the past, the cameras were pretty simple. There were, there were got some birds over here. Um, there were nine focus squares and you would just pick one of those squares that you wanted to use and it's different now. We have 19 focus squares and we have five different types of groups and I also call these clusters. So the easiest way for me to teach this lesson is to first tell you what the clusters are and when you should use them, then to tell you how to cycle through your clusters, and then how to pick the squares in each of those cluster groups. And what I would recommend is just watch this the first time. The second time, get your camera and follow along. The first cluster group is called spot. This is for very precise focusing. It's a very, very small area that you're going to be using for focus. It's best when you have a very thin depth of field or maybe you're doing some macro work and you need a very precise focus. The second is single square. This is just one square that you're gonna pick. It's probably best for shooting portraits. The next cluster type is called expansion because it uses the four adjacent squares as secondary focus points. So what this means is if your camera doesn't see anything in the central focus point, it's going to look in those other four squares for the subject. This is going to be best for shooting sports and fast moving subjects like kids running around. The fourth cluster type is called zone and this uses nine focus squares and it's probably better for sports or fast moving subjects which are closer to the camera. Lastly, we have the auto focus point selector. This is really for beginners. I don't really use it or recommend it. It essentially focuses on the closest object to you. The first thing that you need to do is to go into your menu, custom, it's the orange tab, custom function three, setting six, and you can go in there and you can see all the cluster groups and make sure that they are each registered and they have a check mark by them. So anytime you wanna change anything with your focus, whether it's a cluster, or a square, you need to push this outside thumb button. It's the third thumb button. Okay, so I'm gonna look through this viewfinder and do it. Okay, so I'm pushing this outside thumb button, and now I'm pushing the MFN button. Okay, and as I'm pushing this button, it is cycling through the different clusters. If you know what the clusters are, and you know how to cycle through them, you can change them really, really fast. So watch, boom, 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 okay? Once you have a cluster that you want, changing the square is really, really easy. Probably the best way to do it now is just again, push the outside thumb button, and use the joystick. Move that joystick around to pick the square that you want to use. Okay, so I'm just moving this guy around. Pretty straightforward. If you're shooting portraits, something you have to master is the technique of recomposing. Now you remember this is a two-phase button on these Canon cameras. When you push the button halfway down in the one-shot mode, two things are gonna happen. The first is the camera is going to meter the scene, and the second is that the camera will get focus lock. Okay, so what this means is, if you're shooting a person, what I like to do is to take a single square, put it over their eye, push the shutter button halfway down, and I'm holding it and I recompose. I'm moving the camera to make the picture more aesthetically pleasing, okay? So again, you're going to do this in one shot mode. If you try to do this in AI servo mode, what's going to happen is the camera is going to think it's tracking a moving subject and the focus is gonna be jumping all over the place. It's for sports. It's the most common mistake people make when they're shooting portraits is they're, they're not using one shot, and they're not holding this button halfway down when they're recomposing. So the three exercises that I would definitely recommend are first, learning how to cycle through your focus clusters. Two would be to select different squares with the different clusters. And then lastly, the third would be 
to, to learn how to get a focus lock and recompose. It's very important stuff. I'll be showing you some more examples later on in the video. As a final note, I want to make some recommendations on some of the custom settings. 3.7, you're going to want to turn that one to 1. What this is going to allow you to do is to move your focus square from left to right without having to go through the middle of the focus squares. 3.8, you're definitely going to want to turn on as well. And what this does is it gives you a red indicator. Your squares are going to light up in red, just real quick, to give you visual confirmation that you have focus lock. Okay, so when you're shooting in low light, this is really, really helpful. 3.9 allows you to see where all your focus squares are. And this is important because you want to know which square to use and which one to change to. If you go into the second yellow tab on the bottom of your menu and you turn on VF grid display, you're going to get some grid guidelines that will turn on in your viewfinder. It's a very useful thing. So that is your lesson on focusing and I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new DVD, Canon 7D Crash Course, which has over three and a half hours of helpful lessons. I'll teach you the basics to get you started to great photography and video in no time. It can be ordered from the following link.